What's up, Calic Gang? All right, we got a physics problem on our hands. We're doing some work and we're doing some stuff. Uh, let's get going, all right. So we got this uh, box, it's sliding down a ramp. It's got an angle and uh, we got a lot of parts to this question. So let's go ahead and get started, all right. So the first one asks, uh, what is the work done on the package by friction? Okay, let's get started. Okay, so we know that uh, work is equal to force times distance, right? Okay, so to do this, we need to, we know the distance, right? We have that, it's 2.8 meters. Uh, if you want to find work, we need to find the force of friction. So the force of friction is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. All right, great. So let's find out what these are. We have the coefficient at 0.31. Now we need the normal force. So we do it. The normal force, let's draw a force body diagram. Always a good thing to get started on. Okay, so for this one, uh, I'm going to draw it at an angle because we are at an angle here. So this is like 24 degrees. So gravity's going straight down always, and that's going to create an angle here of 24. Uh, force normal is going to be perpendicular to the surface. I forgot to label this. And then we're going to have our force of friction, which is pushing against because it's going down. Okay, so force normal. You can think of force normal. Uh, you can use this formula, or you can do what I do, or so I think about it. So force of gravity. If it's not at an angle, force of normal, if it's not moving, is equal to force of gravity. But because we're at an angle, this force normal is going to be equal to this y component of force of gravity, which means it's going to be equal to cosine 24 times force of gravity. Force normal uh, is equal to force of gravity cosine of 24. Uh, if, you're, if, you, um, if you want to just skip that, just say uh, force normal is always equal to force of gravity times cosine of the angle. If the angle is zero, just going to equal one, it's going to work out the same. Okay, so we can do this. Uh, so force of normal is equal to uh, mass times gravity times uh, cosine of 24. Okay, and we get the force normal. If you plug in seven kilograms and you know 9.81 for gravity, force normal is equal to 62.7 newtons. Okay, so now we have force normal, we can plug it into this equation. Get force of friction is equal to the coefficient times force normal. Uh, I wrote that again, so it's going to be equal to 0 0.31 times 62.7, and you're going to end up getting, uh, that's not the right number, hold on. Oh, of course, okay. Yeah, we're getting force right now. Okay, so the force is equal to negative 19.43, or it's 19.43 newtons, right? or 19.44, whatever. Okay, then, so this is the force. So then we can plug it back into this. So work is equal to force times distance, so 19.43 times distance, which is 20, or 2.8. I'm actually missing something in that equation. It's cosine of theta. But it's not the theta that you think it is in this one. Uh, this one, we're looking at force as like in the x direction like this. So if you think about this is zero, and then this is 180. You see that the force of friction is a whole 180 degrees away. And if you know anything, you learn that, uh, that's not really rude if you know anything, yeah. Uh, if you know something like this, um, cosine of 180 is negative one. So because it's a 180 degrees, that means that it's gonna put a negative one on this. If you put cosine of 180, because it's pushing against the, the movement. This is just negative one, basically saying that we're pushing against. So that's another way of writing this. And then if you do all this, you're gonna get negative 54.4 joules, which is the force of friction, or the, the work done by friction, right? Okay, so that's one number. I'm gonna write that over here. Try not to make this video too long, I couldn't, didn't put the negative in here. Okay, so force, or work done by friction is negative 54.47 joules. All right, this is part one. I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything and get started with part two. Where's my eraser? I haven't opened it up yet. Oh, it's in here. All right. This could be a long video, I can tell already. When you have a five-parter, I'm gonna be uploading this tonight. It's gonna take like 10 hours, but you know what? It's worth it for you guys. All right, part B. What is the force done by gravity on the block? Okay. So gravity, pushing straight down. Uh, and you can see it pushes the block down too. 
So how do we do this? Well, same thing. Work is equal to force times distance. And then A and cosine beta. OK, great. OK, let's look at this. OK, so how far does the block move? We can find force. This is just force gravity. This is really simple. But distance, you know, you might be inclined to think 2.8. But gravity, because it's pushing straight down, it doesn't go that full 2.8. It goes a different distance. It goes this distance is what we're trying to measure. This is, um, I don't know. But, the, but what you're trying to find here, you can say, you know, use Sokotoa. All right. So because it's the opposite, we're going to use cosine. So cosine of 24 is equal to opposite over adjacent. So I'm going to call this y over adjacent. Adjacent is this one, hypotenuse. You know, it's 2.8. So then we move over 2.8 cosine 24 is equal to y. OK, great. So that's the distance we covered. So you can see that the work done by gravity is equal to the force of gravity, so that's mass times acceleration, so that's 7 times 9.81 times cosine, or not cosine, times the distance, which is this, 2.8 cosine of 24, and then cosine of theta. Let's think about this. Well, gravity's going straight down. That's, the, that's like the way we're trying to see, and we know that the acceleration is going down, so this is like the positive direction. So it's going to be a positive number, and because we're you know doing it this way, don't worry about the cosine in this case. So work done by gravity is equal to another number. Make sure I did this right. Probably. Uh, this is going to be equal to 78.2 joules. Nice. So that's how much uh, force it took gravity to pull that block down, or work it took, you know. Okay, so work by gravity is equal to 78.2 joules. Part two. All right, now on to part three. What is the work done by force normal? Okay, this is a tr not a tricky one actually. Okay, so let's look at the let's look at the motion of the block here. Let's say uh, the block is moving this way, right? It's going down the ramp. Force normal is perpendicular. Now we know that work is equal to force distance cosine of theta. Okay, well if our if the motion is going this way, right? This is the this is what we're measuring at work in, but then we're parallel or we're perpendicular, excuse me. Perpendicular, that cosine is gonna be 90 degrees right here. And cosine of 90 degrees is equal to zero, which means work is equal to zero, or work of force normal is equal to zero, right? Uh, you can think about this as like force normal isn't pushing the block anywhere. It's not doing anything because it's perpendicular. So there you go. Work of normal is equal to zero. Okay, great. Now it's saying uh, part D, find the total work done on the package. Uh, this part is a lot simpler than the other parts. If you want to find the work, you just got to find the sum of all the forces. So work total is the sum of the work. So it's going to be 78.2 minus 54.47, and that's going to be equal to 23.7 joules. There you go. All right, uh, let me write that over here. Actually, let me just keep that there. Okay, that's the total work. It's uh, it's basically just sum up all the works. All right, that's how you find that one. Final one. A uh, package has a speed of 2.2 meters a second at the top of the ramp. What will the speed be when it's gone down 2.8 meters down the ramp? So when it's at the bottom of the ramp. Okay, for this one, we're going to need to use a formula. And basically, uh, this is just a formula that you guys should memorize because it's very useful. And you're going to be using it a lot in this. So work is equal to one half uh, mass volume squared, or velocity. <laughs> velocity initial squared minus, or no, no. This is the final velocity, this is the velocity initial, this is the mass, one half, and this is the work done. So basically, we know the work done. This is uh, that number right there. So 23.7 is equal to one half. The mass is seven. And then velocity squared, this is what we're looking for, minus V naught squared is 2.2 times 2.2 squared. Uh, 2.2 squared. All right. Now we can just go ahead and solve this. Uh, so what am I going to do here? I'm going to expand 
So 23.7 is equal to 7 halves b squared minus, I don't know, 7 halves 2.2 squared. Now you're going to add this to the other side. Uh, so it's going to be like 23.7. Uh, you guys can do the math on this, right? I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll do it out how you would. 7 halves. I'm just too lazy to plug it into my calculator right now. Then you multiply both sides by 2 sevenths. So it'd be like 2 sevenths. And then you take the square root of it all. And it'd be 23.7 plus 7 halves. 2.2 squared is equal to velocity. All right, plug that into your calculator. You get velocity is equal to 3.14 meters a second, which makes sense because we started at like 2.2 and we would speed up as we go down the block. So that makes sense. Whew, 11 minutes, hey, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's how you solve this kind of problem, guys. Uh, I hope I helped a little bit. Um, if, you, if, you're like, if you searched this problem and you found me, you should probably subscribe because I am probably doing the same work as you are. And if you're having trouble, then I'll probably have a video on it soon. So yeah, good luck on your physics homework, guys.